bucks and two cents. This is Pedal. As you know, we are a channel that supports the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens, Mama Mia, all of us here at Sussex Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, 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 everybody. How are you doing? Happy Friday. Hope you have had a great week. Hope all is well. Hope things are well with you. So I just want to say hello and see all my friends in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. So happy that you are here. See, oh, happy Friday. Hello, Lydia Washington. Happy Friday to you, my friend. And uh, Lydia is reminding everyone, and you come into the chat, please subscribe. If you're new here, that is, if you're new here. Definitely give us a subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. Please like and share the video, even though we're just starting and you don't know what you're liking. Like it anyway or like it at the end. Either way, it's fine. And if you're able, join our channel. That would be awesome as well. So anyways, welcome, everyone. Um, who else is here? Oh, Church Nelly is here. Awesome. Um, Squatty from South Carolina. Welcome to you and all our South Carolina Squatties. Hello, hello. Rosanna is here. Hello, Rosanna Smith. And Tara, I'm sorry, Tara is here. Mrs. S, hello, Mrs. S. Welcome. How are you? Our awesome Two Cent Screw members and also Marvel, our Two Cent Screw members here. And Annie is here and Verda and Elena, our Two Cent Screw members here as well. And Verda, hello, guys. Uh, who else? Oh, Angela's here. Hello, Angela. Angela's here. And um, uh, so anyways, we'll say hello to all our other friends as they come in. Oh, I see you there, Emma Day. Emma Day is here. Oh, it's Emma Day. There you go. And Jay Patterson and Jeannie and Cinderella. Hello, guys. I see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, um, it's actually been a very slow week other than the nonsense from earlier. That's just nonsense. But it's actually been a slow week. Our faves are doing whatever it is they're doing under a tree in Montecito. And again, I know California, they are going through right now a storm. And I'm assuming it's happening right now. I didn't check the weather today. But uh, what I understand from yesterday is that um, there's going to be rain, there's going to be snow, there's all kinds of things happening in California. It's just like the weather, talk about climate change issues, I'm telling you. Um, so meanwhile, in New York, it's bright and sunshiny. <laughs> it's just like, and I don't know, I haven't been out there yet today. So um, I'm assuming it feels, or it seems like it's warm, I don't know. You know, maybe it's like, I don't know, 40 something. So if it is, hopefully I'll run off and go play some tennis outside. That'll be really un awesome. So, um, but, um, you know, pray for our friends out there in California and off awesome faves are out there in Santa Barbara, which always get the, you know, brunt of everything there. And so, um, because it's right there by the water, so everything. <laughs> so um, definitely be praying for our faves. So, and all of our friends and, uh, you know, really just be praying for California that everyone is safe and there are no, you know, nobody's injured or die or anything like that, um, but that all are safe and are able to make it through this weather issues safely. So anyways, again, so our faves are nice and quiet under a tree, but few other stuff is happening around, you know, little bit stuff. Um, this came today and I'm still trying to find out where it came from, but apparently a press release came that um, there is a part two of Harry on Stephen Colbert's show. And so to um, this is um, for Tuesday the 28th, apparently there's gonna be a part two of Harry's time with Stephen. They are gonna be doing like a, uh, uh, the COVID questioner. <laughs> and so apparently it was filmed when he was there. And so obviously it wasn't aired then. And so now it's going to be aired on the 28th. So whatever, I mean, I am, I don't really watch TV. So honestly, I not ever watched the Colbert show until this episode. <laughs> And I didn't even watch the whole thing. Like I only watched Harry's segment. So, <laughs> and so I I don't know what that is. So if you've seen it, you will know what it is. And I was like, maybe later on today I'll go see an example of what he asks. 
when um, you know when he's doing his question time on a show. So apparently they filmed, um, according to Jennings' writer down there, says he won't be back uh, in New York. He will be taking the Colbert questionnaire um, or Colbert questionnaire, which was typically a pre-taped segment filmed during their original appearance for a later broadcast. So apparently that's what's going so on the 28th, Tuesday the 28th, which is next Tuesday, we have something to look forward to. It's part two of a Stephen Colbert show with Prince Harry. So this little thing when they were doing the therapy thing with the hands, it was just really wild to me that the minute Colbert said that Harry knew what to do and it was just like, oh, I guess that's a thing. <laughs> you know, who I, I don't. But it's very interesting and very funny and, you know, and also to clear it up, you know, especially what we were talking about yesterday with um, just the um, the misreporting of his book, especially when it had to do with um, his time in Afghanistan. So, um uh, so this this episode, if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. You can go ahead. The extended version is there. Um, or what I could do is put a, also put a link in our show notes. I didn't do that. So I could put a link in the show notes. So at least if you didn't get a chance to watch it, you can get to watch it. So yeah, it was an and also too, that episode of Colbert has what I think six million views on it so far. I mean, it's amazing. I remember when Harry... Um, did um this the and an, the what is it the late night show i think that had like i don't know 20 something million view, views or something like that it was amazing so uh whenever harry does stuff it is always like i mean you know, so many of those on Shadowella Island like to delude themselves into believing that, oh, they're not popular. Oh, they're irrelevant, whatever. And then whenever he does stuff, it just shoots through the roof. And again, it's always amazing. So we're looking forward to that on the 28th. And let's see. Oh, that's right. Um, our thank you, Aris Locke, um, one of our squaddies who is a reporter, basically clarifying exactly what is happening. It's like looking for more of Prince Harry's interview and Colbert on Tuesday, the 28th at 11.35 p.m. So there's some new information there. 11.35 p.m. is his show on Tuesday and uh, GMT uh, 4.35 a.m. So um, he'll make a pre-recorded appearance to answer a uh, Colbert's questioner. Um, we'll see if Stephen, Stephen sticks to his standard questions or go off script. So if you're like me and have no idea what kind of questions Stephen Colbert answers, you're going to go, you'll have to go and watch, you know, what, whatever it is he, you know, whatever kind of question he is. It'll be very interesting to see and also very interesting to hear the answers as well. So we will see. Very, very interesting. Oh, Janice is saying uh, 30 million. So is that um, when he did the Late Show? Um, it's now 30 million. The last time I checked it was, which was, I don't know, last year sometime. <laughs> I think it was 20 something million. So there you go. I guess it's going up to 30 million. It's, it's, I mean, it's really funny. I mean, Harry doing all those, um, you know, training exercise thing. And, and I mean, that was, it's really, really fun. So I can see why people, especially squatties, <laughs> have camped out on that so yeah absolutely um and of course peace bears remains number one and this is um the new york times reporting this is for their march 5th as you can see top right or at least middle right march 5th this is for their march 5th um you know uh reporting spare of course remains at number one um for print and ebook and also hardcover and again poor michelle obama is like if only prince harry wasn't there <laughs> my book would be number one hardcover all of this time it would have been number one if it wasn't for prince harry why you know <laughs> but um, you know it's number one again. It's like, what, six weeks running and it's just keep going. And the funny thing about it is, you know, there was um, people, other books have come out and people were like, oh, this book is going to be um, that, what is it, that guy, Shetty, um, who released the book. They were like, yeah, it's going to really challenge Spare. And it's like, mm, no, no, Spare is it. 
<laughs> they have all, you know, all the books have come out and it's still, everyone is still, they can't get enough of spare. And so much so, I mean, Jay Shetty, that's Jay Shetty's book in number two. Um, so far in hardcover, um, um, this came out, um, let's see, hardcover so far, it sold one, uh, 1 1.8 million copies um, so far in spare. So I don't know if this is just, and it didn't quite say if this is in English or if it's, if it's total or if it's just in English or if it's just in the U S which I'm thinking is just in the U S. Um, but, um, uh, so yeah, that's, that, you know, so far in hardcover, I mean, obviously that's not counting, you know, audit, um, the audiobook and also Kindle, but just the hardcover, they've sold um, over a million copies of it. And I'm not sure, again, if it's just in the US or what it didn't specifically say. So yeah. So, and then Jay Shetty is at the bottom and um, it's just like, yeah. And I guess for the January, January I guess 25,000 uh, or, no, I'm sorry. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. As of, uh, oh, okay. Um, when you look on top of the 1 million, it talks about, it says 25,685. And I think that's probably like the monthly total of how much it's sold. And so and if you look at the, you know, Jay Shetty's book at the bottom, it's like his, and his just came out. It came out after Harry's. Um, it's his, he's has so far sold 18,176. And I think that's for the, probably the month of, um, um, uh, the month of February. And so it's, you know, Harry is, even though Harry has been out, um, three weeks before his, um, Harry is still outselling him. So I don't think he's going to catch up. His was the big one that people, I know those in the British press were saying that his is the one that would, um, dethrone Harry and is like, no, don't think so. And if after three weeks, it's still at number two and it's, you know, Spare is still outselling it, even though, even though Spare was out three weeks earlier, I don't think Jay Shetty's book is catching up to Spare. And unless something big comes out, you know, some major celebrity um, puts out a book, I don't think they're catching Spare. So it may be, you know, maybe a while if not, nothing else comes out. It may be a while before anybody takes out spare. So I am just very excited. I mean, you know, as we've seen, people have thrown everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> and I'm sure including the kitchen sink at spare. And it's still number one, you know. And so this is, I think, the thing that is sticking, as my grandmother used to say, it's sticking in the craw of those who hate Harry and who wish him and Meghan evil, and we know there are many, you know, this is what is the sticking point for them. They can't understand with all the things that they have done to this book, why people still want to read it and why the pushback. And I think that is one of the things they are not prepared for the pushback they're getting now because people are not so easy to believe the nonsense that they print. And so hey, spare, just keep doing your thing, <laughs> you know? And what I, one of the things, again, I've been really fascinated by is just by library Twitter and book Twitter <laughs> and bookstore Twitter and just, just how amazed, you know, they are and just been having so much fun. Uh, and it's just, it's part of this readership in people that people are just excited to read again. And it's just, it's wonderful to see. Um, but I thought this was really funny. This girl on, on Twitter, she tweets, it's my mother-in-law's birthday soon. She's a big nonfiction lover. What's the most popular nonfiction right now? Something to share facts from, um, from with her friends. Issues with the environment, consumerism, politics can be, um, that can be traced back through history, etc. Lawrence Public Library decided to respond, oh, most popular nonfiction book right now it are hands down spare by prince harry and i'm glad my mom died which is by uh one of the an actress who whose mom was very abusive to her uh janet mccurdy and so she's like hands down those are the books <laughs> And, you know, they also talk about others, but it's just, it's really fun that so many, um, um, 
bookstores, et cetera, are so excited about Spare. And they're like, hands down, it's Spare. And then I saw this one, um, Lubbock Fine. And you have all these book clubs popping up, including us. Um, you know, and Lubbock Fine says, um, this week, our book club members met for the first discussion of the year to talk about the book Spare by Prince Harry. They enjoyed a selection of British and American treats was debating the book's revelations. I can imagine the juiciness that came out of that conversation between them. And you can see them on the, I love the picture on the left when they have pictures of all of them, I guess. <laughs> they are picking up on their sides, like who it is I'm supporting in this book. I have the picture. I just love the fact that they just went all out with this, you know? <laughs> They're not playing. They went all out. They got the pictures. They have the treats. They have the flags. They have everything to discuss spare. I just love their commitment to it. <laughs> I just love it. And of course, um, Kibanga Books in Kenya and African Books. And I love the fact that our African brothers and sisters are joined in. And uh, they tweeted out, it's one of the most searing, uh, well, spare by Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. And of course, it, it gives a tagline, you know, it's the most searing images. Um, one of the most searing images in the 20th century, two young boys, two princes walking behind their mother's coffin as the world watched in sorrow and horror. And of course, they hashtag spare, and as you can see. And um, I love their little notice at the bottom that says, sorry, I'm booked for the day. <laughs> I love it. I just love the, you know, the book humor, the library humor that pops up with these. And again, before Spare, I did not know library and book Twitter was a thing, but I love it. I love their commitment to it. <laughs> I love the way that they are having fun and enjoying this. And I mean, good luck. If you can spark a generation of people that pick up a book and read and you learn history, you learn royals, you learn, you know, colonialism. I mean, you learn so many things from all of the, from this book. You learn, you know, you learn mental health environment. You, you learn about the war and all of that stuff in one book. And look, if you can get someone to people to pick up a book that they normally wouldn't do, you have done well. And so kudos to um, Prince Harry and G.R. Moringer for this book because it is definitely inspired people who normally wouldn't do it to pick up a book and read. And so, you know, or form book clubs and have fun and, um, you know, build camaraderie and relationships all talking about spare. So there you go. Oh, Elaine Parker, thank you so much for your super sticker. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. I appreciate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what else is there? Again, it's a kind of a very light day and, and stuff. Um, oh, this is so cool. I'm sure you guys remember the Fisher House. Um, if you don't remember, um, uh, Ken Fisher at the bottom there, if you remember, uh, what was it? Was it last year or 2021 when Harry, when Prince Harry had a um, online um, time with um, Vice um, First Lady Jill Biden and Ken Fisher and Harry, they, they did an online time with veterans. And so the person who introduced Harry's amazing resume was Ken, Ken Fisher. And he and um, his family run the Fisher House Foundation. It was started by his uncle. And, um, you know, so they are very much um, a part of Invictus. Um, he was also, when Harry and Meghan were at the um, Intrepid, He um, they were part of them because he is also, I think he's on the board of the Intrepid as well. So they were all part of, so they have a great relationship with the Fisher House uh, Foundation. And so Fisher House Foundation tweeted this a couple of days ago. Um, they said, um, we are kick we are kickstarting the We Are Invictus season at the Lustra Fisher House. It is a a great day together with the Invictus um, de, uh, DE friends and family team and LMR, LM, LRMC command team. And those are pictures of them. I think this is in uh, Dusseldorf. Um, and so it's it's just great to see um, this, you know, Harry's American um, peeps, his American military peeps team up with the, you know, the Dusseldorf peeps um, doing the games. And it just, I, I just love the community that Invictus has and how it just involves 
military veterans around the world. And, and I love the Fisher House and, and what they do and what they bring to the table. Because if you don't know, what they do is that they have houses around the world, wherever there are military hospitals, um, where veterans can go and get care, you know, for whatever it is, whether it's physical, mental, whatever it is that um, they need care. And so the Fisher House Foundations are a part of those, whether it's the base or the hospital, so that the families of the, the injured soldier can stay with them. And so they built like this house, this is one of the houses, and this is some of the accommodations that, um, as you can see the photos at the bottom, where the, the, the veterans could go and they stay there for free. And to, you know, until they are finished with their care and several families can stay there at the time and build relationship and support each other. And so this is an incredible, incredible organization um, what they do there, family, military family. And again, it's um, a foundation that was started by uh, Ken Fisher's uncle. And so they obviously uncle passed on, but um, him and I think it seemed like his brother, but a lot of the Fisher family are a part of um, the Fisher uh, Fisher House Foundation. And a little bit about them, it said it's uh, since 1990, our impact on military families have been 94 Fisher House operate around the world, 455,000 military and veteran families served, 12 million days of free lodging offered, 575 million in savings to families, four star rating on Charity Navigator for 19 consecutive years. And again, they have this first class setting. I mean, the homes are beautiful where um, families come. And again, while their loved one is um, being taken care of in the hospital, the families come and stay there for free so they can be next to their, their loved one and just be in a place that is, you know, that they could build strength from and get strength from each other. And it's just, I mean, it's one of the most amazing things. And they are constantly building homes around the world. And I guess it, you know, again, it's around the world, it's all over, wherever there's a military hospital, there, they are there. So it is just, it's wonderful, wonderful. So if you ever think of, you know, wanting to donate or whatever, this is a great organization to donate to. Again, as I always say, definitely do your <laughs> do your vetting, do your research. But this is, you know, they are doing good things and I love their relationship with um uh, with Invictus. And it's just, it's just real for me. It's just like, yes, it's just wonderful to see that vets are getting taken care of and in this way and not just them, but their families as well. And so they can stay close. So, oh, Therese, thank you so much. Therese 1001. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your support as always. And Therese, I have to share. Um, I remember when I had all my uh, flower pictures, Therese would be like, when are you going to put this in a book? Are you going to do it in a book? Are you going to do it in a book? And so I put together this little book and then I shared for, um, for uh, Two Cent Screw members. And so um, thank you. I have to say thank you so much for the, being the one to give me the kick in the butt. Every time I look in the comments, I get a comment from Teresa 1001. I was like, did you do it? And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And so thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy the pictures. I hope you like them. So yeah, so I just have to give you some props and say thank you because sometimes we all need someone to give us a kick in the booty so that we will do the things we want to do. And she was that for me and I very much appreciate it. So thank you. <laughs> She's probably like, why'd you say it? But I just, I'm just grateful. I need that sometimes. <laughs> um, what else I got? Oh, um, leaving that wonderful news, I'll get into the chat for a second. And we just have very few things. So I'm just going to get through it and then I'll get into the chat and we can hang out for the rest of the time. So this little mess, it's just, you know, the, um, the Queen's Jubilee. Yes, it was last year. The Queen's Jubilee is still taking money, apparently, from taxpayers. And it's just one of those things you're like, really? Are you serious? People could be this crazy, apparently. The, the BBC reported that the Queen's Corgis, a Corgi sculpture makes a loss for Norfolk's council at auction. Green wicker Corgis, yes, 
people took money <laughs> to make green, I'm sorry, giant wicker corgis with each council. Um, I'm sorry, a giant, I can't read at the moment, giant wicker corgis, which cost a council 3,000 pounds each were sold off at a significant loss. It has emerged. Broadland District Council spent 21,000 pounds on seven of the sculptures to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. It commissioned a six foot, uh, 1.8 meter long, four foot or 1.2 meter high statue to form an art trail last summer. But in a charity auction, Four of them went under the hammer for just $500 each. I mean, they spent 3,000 each and they only got five, 500 pounds each um, when they tried to you know, auction them off. Liberal Democrat Council, Carolyn Carmi Govan Lou said that eventually, uh, they eventually reached a relatively low price. Four of the corgis were auctioned off at, a, at the beginning of this month, she said. They raised the total of 2,140 pounds, which has been donated to the Nelson uh, Journey, a charity for bereaved children, which is, you know, a very worthy, a worthwhile charity. My issue was, with that is that they didn't get the full cost of them back. No kidding. I think the money could have been spent elsewhere. No kidding. <laughs> you spend taxpayers' money, 21,000 uh, pounds of taxpayers' money, and only got back 2,140. And it's like, I think the money could have been spent elsewhere. You think? Really, Caroline? You think you could have been spending it, maybe giving it to somebody in your constituents who don't have food at this moment? You know, they could have used that 21,000 pounds. <laughs> This is the kind, I mean, and I know it's like, you'd be like, okay, it's only 21,000, but that's 21,000 pounds that somebody could have fed their family. They could have paid their bills. They could have paid their um, electric bill. They could have paid for their heat. They could have, you know, paid for their school, their kids' school lunch. They could have paid for travel. For I mean, so many people could have benefited from that 21,000 pounds that they spent on wicker giant corgis. And this is the kind of nonsense that you like. And then to have, you know, it's like, um, I think that money could have been spent elsewhere. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> you think you really think it could have been spent elsewhere? You think anybody else could have used that money? You know, and 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 then that's one of the wicked. I mean, why would you? Like, I don't even understand why you would want that thing. Like, what would you do with it exactly? <laughs> and all of this to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee, and the Queen is long dead and gone, and she's still taking. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, it's funny about the Queen. I have to say because, because well, what he pointed out recently. That this queen has been gone and the queen, you know, everyone said she's been served 70 years and she is everything to this nation and she's this and that. And nobody talks about the queen. Nobody pays attention. There are no articles about the other than this where it's taking money, you know, for her jubilee. Nobody is talking about the queen. It's like, it's almost like she wasn't even here. And it's just like, because we know that their all focuses on Montecito and their, you know, fantasy of whatever it is Harry and Meghan are doing in Montecito. Nobody talks about the queen. And for all, let's talk about her corgis, you know. And it's just, it's very fascinating to me for a country that claims that to be so devoted to this woman that nobody talks about her. But again, you know, coming back to this, <laughs> this Norfolk Council, it's just like, you know, that bereaved, I mean, yes, that's great that they they they, they gave the 2,140 pounds to the, the bereaved children's home or charity, and that's great. That's, you know, I'm sure that they were happy with the 2,140 pounds, but imagine how much happier they would have been if it was 21,000 pounds that you gave to them. Imagine how many bereaved children could have been helped from that money. 
you know so again the utter stupidity <laughs> goes around and this is exactly what's going to be happening with the you know coronation that nobody asked for again this is a jubilee nobody asked for <laughs> here we are again but anyways and there's this now this woman as we know, I mean, I know a couple of people have mentioned her here and I haven't, you know, it's like, I am not even, but this popped up today where this woman opened up, I'm not even going to say her name. She opens up about a battle with POTS syndrome. I had never even heard of that before until today. And she says, I am not doing that great. And um, hang on, I'm going to move myself out of the way so I can read it. It says, Real Housewife of New York alum explains her worsening battle with POTS syndrome on Instagram Thursday, gently reminding fans never to comment on somebody, someone's appearance. This woman, trying to tell people how they should respond to her, has spent the last how many years attacking Megan for no reason at all? other than meanness and nastiness and projecting her own misery onto someone who has done nothing to her. Instead of focusing on, and literally I had to go and look up this because I had never heard of it in my entire life uh, before today. And so I don't even know if I say it right. Postural orthostatic tactile tachycardia syndrome. I don't even know how, I didn't even know if that's how to say it, but it's a, it's a symptom related to reduced blood volume that occurs when standing up. This syndrome is usually triggered when a person stands up after lying down. In most, it most commonly affects women, between, women between ages 15 and 50. Symptoms include lightheadedness, fainting and rapid heartbeat, which is which are relived by lying down again. Adding extra salt to the adding extra salt to the diet, increased fluid, and taking medication can help the disorder. So this apparently is what she has. And so apparently it's getting bad. It's worsening for her. And again, this is apparently what she has been dealing with. And instead of focusing on her life and focusing on getting better and having some positivity in her life and, and you really putting positivity out in the world, this woman has spent every waking moment, it seems, attacking a woman that has done nothing to her. And again, when you see it with so many people, especially say with the British press, a lot of them are either they're getting divorced, broken relationships, broken home, being cheated on, being in the hospital because of some ailment or another. And then he comes out and you realize they're in misery in their own lives are in, you know, is miserable. And instead of focusing and, and getting better, they're taking out their whatever it is on a woman that has done nothing to them. They put that off on a biracial woman who had don't even know they exist. And they're putting all this negativity on the world and then turning around and trying to dictate to people how they comment on her appearance. And it's just like, are you serious? You know, and I don't, you know, wish her any ill ill at all. I mean, when people have stuff like this, you can, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't wish stuff like this if I don't have enemies. And if I did, I wouldn't even wish this on them. I don't wish evil on people, no matter what they do and no matter what they've done. But, you know, this kind, you see this kind of thing and you're like, you have this thing going on in your life. And instead of trying to get better and trying to, you know, and then be a better person and trying to help maybe other people who are going through this. You've spent the, your entire time deciding to trash someone who has done nothing to you and then trying to dictate how people respond to you and your illness. And I'm not saying people need to go and attack her, but I mean, the absolute <laughs> audacity, you know, and again, I'm not like her, so I'm going to wish her well and wish, you know, I don't know if there's a cure for this or whatever, um, you know, but I, I definitely wish her well. But woman, you need to find something better to do with your life, you know, 
try to look at whatever this thing that you're going through in a better light so that you're not projecting that negative energy onto the world and projecting that negativity onto people that have done nothing to you, you know? And it's like, you know, part of you feel like I'm supposed to feel what compassion, you know what I mean? And, I, and for me, it's like, whether I want to or not, I do feel compassion for her because again, with illness, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want, you know, I I always put myself in those situations. Like, what would I feel? Or you know, what would happen to me if I'm in that situation? Or how awful that would be. And so I don't wish that on anybody, you know. But then I'll, you, you know, on the other hand, you're like, but you have been doing this awful thing to other people, you know. And so it's like, you can't be upset if people come now and trash you or make fun of you or whatever. And I hope nobody does. But you can't be sitting here now it's like, oh, you know reminding fans to never comment on someone's appearance like well you know you put yourself there you can't be regulating how people comment on you after you've put out all this negativity on other people you've been commenting on other people and lying about it you know so anyway that's all i gotta say on this woman i'm not even gonna say her name because i'm not giving her clout so <laughs> unbelievable but, you know, to, you know, chalk that down. The things I learned today, I'd never heard of pots before in my life. There are all these things that I just never heard of before. And so, you know, I wish her well. Um, but anyways, moving on to more <laughs> positive news. <laughs> um, this, uh, I thought this was so cool. Um, you guys can remember um, this. He was um, Sheku Kanai. Um, Kane, I guess he says Kane Mason. He played the cello at, um, he's a cellist that played at Harry and Meghan's wedding. And so I guess his community in Nottingham made this uh, sculpture of him and it's in a park and you can see the bench there and him and uh, two other people. One is like a weightlifter and I don't know the other guy. He looks like he's just on a phone or something. So I don't know. And I was trying to find out who they, you know, the park and, and I couldn't, but he posted about it and you just felt so honored that they would do this. He says, I can't put into words how honored I am to have this portrait bench in Nottingham. My, my love of music began there to be recognized like this for what I love doing, for what I love doing is very special. Thank you. And that's a, you know, the sculpture of him there. And it's, I just thought it was so cool. I'm like, wow. I would be honored too if somebody did that, if I was an issue and someone did that, you know? So it just it was really, it was a great thing. And I don't know if it was a surprise if he knew it was going to happen before. I don't know. I don't know anything, the background other than what he posted. And again, I was trying to find it and I couldn't. So I do some more research and see if I find more about the park and why it was there, why they put it there and, you know, who these other people are in relation to it. So, but he is definitely very honored and he is doing great. I mean, he has performed and I mean, all over the U.S. I know I saw like um, something he was doing in Philadelphia. He's performed all over. So, yeah, he is doing wonderful. I mean, all of those people who performed like the choir, the Kingdom Choir and him and um, others who are have been part of that wedding have gone on to do such great things and they've benefited so much from being a part of that wedding. So it's like kudos to him. I mean, not just because of the wedding. I mean, the guy is super talented. In fact, his whole family, are, they're all musicians, it seems, and they're all super talented. He's just the most famous of them. So the guy is just, you know, but being at the wedding and being a part of the wedding definitely put him on the world stage. And, you know, so that way, it is wonderful. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So there. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Internet is saying, um, pedal 5.9 million of Prince Harry and Colbert on YouTube, 38 minutes. Ah, so it's 5.9, almost 6 million. 5.9 million views so far of the Stephen Colbert, Prince Harry. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Internet. I appreciate that information. And that correction, I appreciate. Um, let's see what else I got. 
our girl Serena, our girl Serena, she is going to be at the NAACP Awards. She's actually being honored. It's like we NAACP says we are honoring the GOAT. 23 time Grand Slam champion Serena Williams will receive the prestigious Jackie Robinson Sports Award during the 54th uh, NAACP Image Award. The 54th Image Award will air this Saturday, actually, tomorrow um, at 8 p.m. And if you remember, Harry and Meghan were there last year. So, and they present. Presented uh, Dr. Safia Noble with that award, the Archwell NAACP Award, the Tech Award. So I am hoping that they will be presenting someone else an award because I think it was supposed to be yearly, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm hoping they, and it's, it's a virtual award, so it's not going to be an award show, I think, um, in terms of people at the, you know, gathering together as the other awards. I think this is a virtual award. I know Jennifer Hudson was also, a, um, get. she's also getting an award. She tweeted about it. So I'm just really happy our girl Serena um, <laughs> is being awarded with that. So awesome, Serena. And also, I love it when people quote um, Harry and Meghan, um, the mentally informed, um, they did a hashtag TGIF and their TGIF quote was Prince Harry's, the experience I have had is once, the experience I've had is that once you start talking about experiences with mental health, you realize that actually you are a part of a big club. And that is so very, very true. So very true. So I do, I love it when um, organizations um, use Harry and Meghan's quotes. So yeah, mentally informed. And that is so very true. And finally, tomorrow we're doing Tyler Perry's Harry's Waiting. And I'll be re-listening to it again today. I love that book. So hopefully you guys have had a great time reading it and are excited tomorrow at one o'clock we are going to chat about tire is waiting so hope you guys are excited about it so i am going to go into the chat and spend the rest of the time in the chat that's all i had on anything news i said it was very light today so um you know of course <laughs> As you know, maybe now because I haven't been on Twitter or anything since uh, you know I'm on here. So who knows? Things are breaking all the time. I'm sure maybe later more stuff will be coming out. So um, we'll update as it comes. So yeah. So I'm gonna go in the chat and see what you guys are saying. And um, until the end, uh, let's see. Lorna says Corgi sculpture should have been <laughs> should have been to Ford Fiesta for her longs. <laughs> for her long-standing service for picking up the queen's corgis well actually i know well um i think sarah and andrew has the queen's corgis i think they are taking care of them or is it corgi still did she i mean i know they apparently they had other dogs she had other dogs as well so but whatever they have i think sarah and andrew has them so i guess you know <laughs> I guess Fort Fiesta could have gotten the <laughs> could have gotten the, the sculptured uh wicker ones. I can't believe people actually spent money on this thing. Like I just I can't <laughs> I'm like, y'all are just some special people. It just I I can't. Um <laughs> amazing, absolutely amazing. B10 Pow says, but as usual, um, they use the Sussexes as distraction from their rotten issues, as usual, because they know, you know, when they say Harry and Meghan, people are going to run, and so they're not going to pay attention to whatever it is that's happening on Shutter Island, of course. Absolutely, of course. Uh, Sylvia, uh, Sylvia, I am happy that you're able to catch it live as well. I'm happy you're here. Well, I mean, hopefully you're still here. <laughs> so I'm happy you're here as well. So welcome. Mama Jane says that they should stay away from that toxic coronation. I look, I'm telling you, everybody should stay away from that toxic coronation. Um, you know, and again, I think Republic Group, they said they are planning these stunts. And again, with the Republic Group, take a cup of salt when you're thinking about these people because they're not exactly, you know, <laughs> they're very iffy, you know, shall we say. And um, But they're the only people that are doing anything in the way of protests or anything like that. So I'm like, well, at least somebody is doing something <laughs> about something. So yeah. Um, so look out for some stunts and whatever. But they said they're going to be doing a big protest during the coronation. I hope people just stay away. Because again, people have... They have lives, they have things to do, you know, but 
again, you know, the thing that I've noticed with Brits, they love a party. So, you know, give them a party and they're there. Many of them are like that. So they know it and they know the things that would draw a crowd. And so there you go. Um, Lorna says, uh, Petal, that's so true. Didn't even realize it myself. Their beloved queen. Yeah. They have not been talking about Queen Betty at all. I mean, they would mention her in passing. You know, it's funny. Um, I saw someone posted um, a screenshot of an OK magazine where Kate is the big center. She is the big photo. And then you have Camilla on one side and the queen on the other side. And then, they, you know, they have like different royals like the Ford Fiesta and Edward and, and the rest of the royals, you know, uh, there. But they have the queen in a little box the same size as, <laughs> as Camilla and the rest. And Kate is the big, supposedly the big star of the whole thing. And I'm like, they have put the queen, this queen that they all bow down, claim, at least claim to bow down to. And there she is in one little box, the same size as all the rest. <laughs> and it's just like, mm, yeah. And this is the person that, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's, ah, yes. Lydia says, karma is busy. Yep. Come on, those ancestors, I'm telling you, they are always at work. Always at work. Um, um, adorable. Oh, I like that. Adorable says, if it's H&M sculpture, it would have sold out greatly. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, what are you going to do with a wicked corgi? <laughs> I just can't. It's like I believe that people actually did a wicked corgi. <laughs> I'm like, that is just the funniest thing I've seen. Um, Faithful says, what the hell is a pot well, There you go. That was my question. I had to go Google it. That I never heard of it before today and had to literally go and Google it. And that's why I read it out so that, you know, if you don't know, as you, you know, you didn't know either. Yeah, that's a thing, apparently. Um, who knew? Um Let's see. Unbelievable. B10 Pal said, yes, that woman whose name I shall not mention is just an unlovable human who takes shots at other people. Yeah, her and the other one who used to be a reporter and just, just nastiness and nastiness all over. And it's just like, you know, I don't know how you sleep at night with just all that negative energy all the time. Like, I don't get that. I mean, how do you have a healthy life with all that negativity? <laughs> I just, you, you can't. Your body reacts to things like that. So unbelievable. Um, let's see. Central Rella says she should eat more, too skinny. I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about her, that woman. But apparently in, you know, further in the article, she said she she lost four pounds in two days. I mean, some people would be like, oh, I wish, I, you know, wish it was only four pounds for me. I know that. But for her, you know, she has a small frame, I guess. So that's a lot for her. And I guess you lose weight because I, I again, I all I know is what I read. So whatever it's doing, it's doing a number on her body. And so, you know, as she says, she's not doing well right now. So, yeah, it just, I mean, when you have that much negativity in your life and you're already sick or, you know, whatever, you already have this stuff and you have just you know, nothing positive coming into you, what exactly do you expect from your body exactly? You can't expect to have all that negative energy and your body not respond or your body not react in some way. So I, you know... I don't know. Maybe she will learn. I, I, some people just don't. Um, Black Queen said it must be all the pot she's smoking. Karma is a doozy in the bloodstream. Sorry, not sorry. I don't know about her lifestyle, so I can't speak to if she smokes pot or not. I don't know. I, I know nothing about her other than this person that takes shots at Megan. I literally know nothing about her or her life. Um, so this is the most I know about this woman, you know, and also she had said she had dated Megan's husband. They went on one date or something beyond that. I don't know anything else about her. So other than she, um, you know, 
um, she's taking shots at Megan. It's just unbelievable. Um, Mashara says um, that woman needs to be needs another takedown from Omarosa. Even Omarosa supports uh, supported Megan. Yeah, Omarosa has been very supportive of Megan actually. Yes, and I heard about the one her taking her down too. It's just <laughs> ah yes. Anyways, um, let's see. Uh, Sylvia says, uh, pedal that woman that attacked Megan right before Oprah interview has been on a vicious attack ever since. And yeah, she has just about any time she sees Megan, anytime Megan does anything, you know, you see po people posting stuff that she said about Megan and it's always something nasty, you know, and you know, also Prince Harry. I guess she's moved on from Megan. We haven't seen Megan forever. And she turned on Prince Harry as well. Maybe she was doing it all along and I just didn't know. But it just, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, Lana says, um, so what BF is saying, what is BF? saying allegedly is that when she stands up she loses her mind that's no excuse for um what she says when she's sitting down just saying so they're making an excuse that she is nasty because she stands up <laughs> well that's that's no excuse at all she's just nasty whether you sit or stand or whether you know look at so many people are going through even worse things than that and they're not nasty and you know being hateful and racist to people so no, that's no excuse at all. Absolutely. Um, CMEX says, I'm gonna wish um, that the laws will be done. Let's say, let's just say I will not be lassoing her to the prayers list. Oh, there you go. Um, you know, some people just you know the Lord will be done in their life. Yeah. Um B10 says, Cinderella, that woman cannot put on extra pounds on her body because her mind is negative and rotten towards others. Her body is a reflection of her heart. And, you know, it's very, it, you know, and that's, it seems very simple or simplistic to think this way, but a lot of our thoughts and a lot of the things that we put inside, it really affects us physically. And I don't think we pay enough attention to how the things that we consume affects our body. And, it, you know, not just in terms of eating, but in terms of the things that we put into our mind, the things we feed our mind, and then the things that comes out, you know, when we feed our mind negative, nasty stuff, you know, it has a physical effect on our bodies, you know, so it's just, Yeah. Hopefully she changes for her own sake. I hope she realizes like, mm, maybe though this way is not the best way. And maybe I should just mind my business and not be taking out my issues on other people who didn't do anything to me. So hopefully this will help, you know, hopefully you can only hope that she changes. So one can only hope. Um, let's see. Black Queen says, I'd like to believe that I am one of the most empathetic person in the world. However, sometimes some people don't deserve our empathy and care. SMH. Yeah, I mean, look, I would say none of us deserve each other's empathy or care. You know, none of us deserve any of it. None of us deserve forgiveness. None of us deserve, you know, whatever. But I'm grateful. <laughs> On the days when I don't deserve it, I get it, you know. I think in terms of grace from the Lord. So in for only because of the grace of our Lord that I can, you know, turn around and say, you know what, this person solely does not deserve it. And if people don't want to give her empathy, I understand. Because you look at somebody that, you know, doing stuff that hateful, why would you want to extend any grace or any empathy towards them? And the only reason I could do it. The only reason that I have anything in me to want to extend any of that to someone is because I know that there are days that I need it as well. <laughs> 
there are days that I am a mess and that I am messed up royally and I need grace and I need to not be treated as I, you know, the way that I behave. And that's the only reason because I remember that when I need grace that I'm given it. And so that's the only reason way or else I just wouldn't do it because it's like, she, look at what she's done. She doesn't deserve it. You know, so this is how I reconcile that <laughs> for me. So, um, Sonia feels differently. Sonia says, I don't feel a thing. Uh, her, that I think for that woman, I hope the next thing I read about her, oh, Sonia, uh, let's hope not. Let's hope not. Uh, you know, we all, we all are not deserving of anything. So let's, you know, let's, you know, I'm going to extend grace on your behalf. I understand the, you know, the upset because she is very, 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 it's upsetting having to hear somebody be that nasty. So I'm going to extend grace on your behalf. Um, uh, though I understand, I totally understand. Um, Lydia says, I hope this young man is doing well. He is awesome. Yeah, Shaku is amazing. And, you know, it's how young he is as well. I mean, the whole family our musicians, they are so talented. It's just, it's wonderful to see um, the things that he has done. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Rochelle says, nothing needs to be said. Karma is that girl. Oh, she is, and I love her too. I'm telling you, all of these people who have been doing Megan wrong and Megan and Harry wrong, Karma and the ancestors have been paying them visits. It's like, I don't need to, I don't need to hate you. I don't need to wish anything on you. Karma, the ancestors and the Lord himself pays them visits. And you know what? We are free to love. <laughs> we are free to love and we do not have to go there. So that for me is just like, mm. I'm not spending my time hating you. You know, I'll let the Lord take care of you. Um, Cookies and Cream says, I didn't like to see any, I don't like to see anyone sick. However, I have no sympathy for her whatsoever. You reap what you sow. Megan had suicidal ideations because of the abuse from people like her. Exactly. That's why, again, I understand. I totally understand when people are like, you know what? No, I, I just can't. Because she knew what Megan went through. She, you know, as all, everyone, Megan talked about it. And she had no grace. She had no sympathy, no empathy extended at all towards Megan. And to this day. And so I believe me again, I totally get, I totally get that, you know. And again, trying to regulate how people respond. It's like, girl, you know, you're not in a position to make demands of anybody you don't you you don't have a stool to stand on to make demands on anybody so yes and sean yes andrew is andrew still a sick old man asking for a friend yes sean he is a sick old man yes he is yes he is and sean i i'm hoping you're coming i'm going to be at part of the book club tomorrow so i'm looking forward to your comments you always have the most insightful things that i had wouldn't think of so I am looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. So, <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Sylvia says, uh, this is the woman that attacked Megan in a horrible rant after one of the archetypes pod. And when people went after her, she supposedly contacted Twitter because people were being mean to her. Are you serious? I didn't even know about this one. I didn't, Again, I've literally been blocking her out and her and the other one, the, the other nasty one, um, the one with blonde hair who was the, um, the reporter. Like I've a little bit been blocking them out. So it's like, it's so it's very rare that it comes through. So when it's big news like this and everybody is reporting on it, then I will see it. So I didn't realize, I didn't know about this. It's, it's really wild the entitlement. Like you go on a terrible rant about someone and then you're upset that you get, people are coming after you to the point where you're going to Twitter. Because I mean, <laughs> And again, this is the same with the British press mentality, the royal mentality. 
they can abuse you, but you speak up about the abuse and you're the abuser. I mean, look at what they did to Ngozi Filani. Look at what they've done to Harry and Meghan. It's the same thing. The same behavior. They abuse and then when you respond, then you are the one that is in the wrong. How dare you come after them? It is... <laughs> Oh my goodness. I just, I can't even, this is, this is madness. She went, she contacted Twitter. <laughs> Good luck on that one. Good luck with that one. That is unreal to me. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm going to leave it there. So we remember that we're, um, we're going to be here tomorrow. I'll just leave that right there. Um, let's see what else. Um, Um, uh, Lydia says they created an annual award, so I hope to see them. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought it was um annual as well, so maybe they're just not real. And and I, you know, I would be very happy if they're part of it, and we just don't know until they show up. That takes away all the ridiculous narratives that can be, you know, that will be there before that it, they, we see them, you know, a part of it when we see them so i am just yeah so i'm looking forward i'm definitely going to be looking out for it i'm probably most likely going to you know see it online um but yeah very very much looking out uh looking out for that and again very happy for our girl serena <laughs> and who else is going to win the archwell award so that would be great um let's see what else you guys are saying Jeannie says, an absolutely true quote from Prince Harry. Yeah, it's absolutely true. It's like when you um, start sharing about, you know, your mental health struggles, you realize it's like, oh, wait a minute. So many people have the same struggle and they, everyone is thinking, oh my gosh, I'm the only one. Oh my gosh. You know, and then you start talking about it and then everyone starts and you're like, wow, it's so much bigger than just me. And so it's so true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, Jay Fadison is looking forward to tomorrow's book chat, book chat. All right, kudos. I am very much looking forward to it as well. So awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see. Cookies and Cream says, oh, she's talking to Faith. Um, she's a despicable human being to whom much is given, much is required. Karma has paid her a visit. And that is so true. When you have so much, it's like, you need to, you know, we should be spending it, sharing it and giving it and, you know, sharing goodwill. She has so much given to her. And instead of being out there spreading the good news and sharing, she's putting out negativity in the world. So there you go. Um, let's see. Hope's Garden says, Petal, we may have discovered how Fergie got a new pad. Taking care of the queen's precious corgis may have come with financed, oh, stipend, hello. Oh my goodness, I never even thought of that. Yes, of course she will be paid to take care of the queen's corgis. And, you know, and look at who, you know, the queen leaves it with her favorite son and his wife. And yes. Oh, wow. And it's also true. It's like, where did Fergie get four million pounds? This is the same woman who was borrowing money. What is it? 10,000 pounds from Jeffrey Epstein? Where did she come up with four? I mean, I know she sells books and stuff like that, but I don't, at least I don't know that her books are all that successful. Maybe they are. And I just haven't paid attention to it, but She's paid four million pounds for a new house or apartment, or I'm assuming it's a house or something. Where did she get that money? And apparently she bought it up front. So where did she get that money? So this is a, hmm, hopes God you may have hit on something there. Unbelievable. Wow. I never thought of that. So then again, I was really focused on, you know, Fergie <laughs> and, her, and her dealings. But very, very interesting. Hmm. Okay, then. Well, you know, if you got four million pounds to take care of the Queen's Corgis, I don't blame her for taking it, you know, because when she when she um, divorced Prince Andrew, she got next to nothing. Diana got millions and she got next to nothing, you know, and so she's basically been begging, 
and borrowing money this whole time. And so, yeah, it's, look, if they're willing to give you all that, girl, take that money. Take that money and do whatever you need to. If you have to take care of the corgis for the rest of your life for that money, just do what you need to do. Because again, when she got divorced, she got very, very little. So yeah, when they even when they caught her with that um that suitcase and all that stuff, I think that was after um I, or the, coming to the end of her marriage or after they divorced, whatever, and all of that stuff. And she was trying to do that, you know, con thing where they get money, um, where she took money for you know to introduce you know this fake person to Andrew, who she thought was a real person, and all of that stuff. What's to make money? Because again, when she divorced, she didn't get anything. She didn't get much of anything from Andrew. And so she was trying to do whatever to make money. And so again, if you look, taking care of corgis is a upstanding job. <laughs> At least she's not stealing it from somebody or doing some shady stuff. Girl, take that money. That's all I got to say. There you go. Um, C Max says, um, my daughter's friend and her father has pots. Oh wow, she would get dizzy and have to lay in lay on the floor. Her dad died from a heart attack. Oh my goodness. Wow, I am so sorry to hear this. Uh C Max, thanks for sharing. But I, you know, I and so many of us had no idea that I've never heard of this before. This is wild. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. So, but thanks for sharing. Boy, you have all this stuff going on in the world and you're just sort of like me, merrily going along and not realizing people are suffering with all of this stuff. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, dizziness. Oh, gosh. I, anything but dizziness. I just, I can't take dizziness at all. I mean, I haven't felt dizzy in years probably, but it just, oof, that is, you know, <laughs> that's no joke. Um, let's see. Oh, Sylvia, I think you're it today. I'm dropping on your your uh, your uh, post the whole time. It says, uh, but I saw the magazine cover and they did not, they don't know how they look leaving the one biracial <laughs> royal lady's picture on that cover or off the cover. Uh, but what they did for spite makes them look small and the R word. I don't know what the oh racist. <laughs> um, but it's very yeah. I mean, they left Megan off the car, and I'm glad Megan is not among these. Like, look, whatever. Um, but it's just you know, you look at the cover, and it's just boring and bland. That I mean, I, I you know, their thing is these are the royal women. So by leaving Megan off, it's like okay, you know, they're dissing Megan or you know, chucking her aside or whatever. But I'm like, I, Megan is. If Megan is going to be in a cover, it's not going to be an okay, for one thing, because that's a tabloid. And two, it's like, Megan will have her own cover. She doesn't need all those people around her. And again, it's like these little boxes, and the queen was in one of the little boxes. And somehow, Kate Middleton is supposed to be the star of the... And it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> this is just so wrong. So, Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, c Mike is giving us some more information about the POTS. It says, is, uh, POTS is genetic and is basically a heart. Oh, my goodness. And it's basically a heart condition and impacts blood flow. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, this is very dangerous. This is very serious. I mean, yeah, dizziness, of course, is serious. But, oh, wow. So, you know, and she and that woman said it's um, hers is getting worse. So whatever is happening, it's getting worse for her again. I wish her no harm or no ill, uh, you know, but I just hope that, now, you know, now she's talking about it. She can change and become a better person because, you know, you know, you have this stuff going on and it's getting worse. You, you know, how do you reconcile being a nasty person while this stuff is going on in your life? And it's, and then asking people to not comment on, you know, people's looks. And it's just like, you know, so. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, Sonia says, Puddle, I love you to pieces. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Um, but you're too nice to some people. Oh. <laughs> Karma is coming for all of them. Well, I, you know, Sonia, I as I said, it's honestly, it's not, it's literally not me being nice. If it's not for the grace of the Lord Himself, 
I would be wishing all kind of evil on this woman. But I just remember the days when I need grace, <laughs> the, days, the days when I am at my worst and I need the grace of the Lord <laughs> and I know he gives it to me and let me help me to start over. And so because I remember that is the reason I'm able to give grace. Had it not for that, had it not be for that, I would be in this, I would be right there having no mercy or compassion on her at all. So this has nothing to do with me being nice at all. Just that is the Lord himself. Because had it not been for him, I would have been like, woman, you know, it's just that I remember when I need grace and when I am not being very nice and God has to have mercy on me, and which is a lot and which is often, I'm like, okay, I better be giving other people some grace because... When I need it again, I want to make sure that he gives it to me. So maybe I'm just looking for self-preservation could be part of this too. Maybe it's just selfishness for me too. That could be part of it. Hey, I'm right there. So um, so that's that's where I'm with, with that one. So yeah, that's only because of the Lord himself. So <laughs> um, let's see. Um... Let's see, Phyllis Johnson. Hi, Phyllis. Phyllis says, Bethany is, oops, I said her name. I didn't want to say her name, but there you go. Is the irrelevant actress and is uh, trying to produce excitement in herself with the public. I take what I think, uh, what a grain of salt. She is very jealous and is Harry and Meghan, uh, oh, I'm assuming she's very jealous of Harry and Meghan because they are popular. And you were so right in that, you know, there's a lot of jealousy there because I didn't even know she had a show recently until I saw somewhere that it was canceled. And I think everyone at the same time were like, she had a show on TV. <laughs> I mean, I don't watch TV. So, you know, very, you know, it's okay that I didn't know. But it seems so many other people did not even know she. And I'm like, you have a show on TV. And instead of sitting there promoting your show, you're attacking Megan and you're attacking them for her show and you have a show that's not doing well and then it got canceled because you spent your time attacking someone else's show <laughs> if you spend all that time promoting your own show maybe it wouldn't have been canceled just saying you know it's just it's crazy it is absolutely crazy amazing um Let's see. Um, Claudia Sims says, hello everyone. I walked into a doctor's office the other day with my book spare. The doctor said to me, you have a famous book there. Oh my Lord, you're your doctor know about spare too. <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody has gone spare crazy. This is wild, this is so fantastic. Wow, this is so absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and so very random too. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, uh, Lorna says, that woman built an empire with, a, with the skinny cocktail drink product which she sold for millions. She got her start in a in an apprentice reality show. The contestant prize was to be an apprentice to Martha Stewart. Oh, okay. So more information on that woman. What did she become an apprentice to Martha Stewart? Inquiring minds want to know. Let me know in the comments. Um, let's see. Uh, Lydia, oh, she's talking to you, Sylvia. Oh my goodness, so that was close to you, Lydia. I didn't realize that. That's right. Uh, she's talking to Sylvia. I'm so, um, hope this is okay to put this up there. Well, not. Let me take this down just in case it's not. Um, so, I mean, you wrote it. So let me know if it's okay to put it up there and talk about it because I don't want to 
give that away. Sorry, I sh maybe I should have read it first before I put it up there. Um, let's see. Moving on. Let me know if it's okay, and then I'll put it there and talk about it. If not, I won't. Um, let's see. Um, um, C-Max says, uh, waiting for the consort to get her visit. She had a few emails, but I need to knock at the door. Okay, I'm not sure what we're talking about here, so sorry. I'm sorry, c -Mac. Um, Let's see. Teresa1001 uh, says, Sermon on the Mount, love your enemies. So I pray for the deliverance and conversion of haters and leave everything in the Lord's hands. Yeah, the Lord's like, uh, it's mine to avenge. Let me. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Rosanna literally said the same thing. <laughs> the Lord says, vengeance is mine. Yep. Um, and Black Queen says, oh, prayers to the ancestors are racking up bonus points. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's, it is literally not an you know not a coincidence anymore we see that all the time with all these people who have been nasty to harry and megan stuff is happening in their lives and you're like mm. at first it was like well this is a coincidence and now it's like mm, no it's this is not too this has happened way too many times for this to be a coincidence we are sure of it now so yes um uh Uh, Charlie Stacey says, um, the, to imagine the level of antipathy they show our faves is unconceivable. They see Megan as inhuman at worst, devoid of feeling at best. Yeah, they definitely do not see her as human because they feel perfectly fine to throw all the nastiness at her. But the moment that comes back to them in tiny doses, they freak out. They, they can't take a tiny bit of what they throw out. And it's just, it's unbelievable. It's like, and that, again, is one of the reasons I hated that tungsten thing with, with King Charles calling him. Because it's like, that is exactly it. They just assume when black women, women with black blood, do not have feelings. We are not human. So they feel like they can throw everything. And the minute it comes back, the tears, the white woman tears come flowing down. It's unbelievable. Um, let's see. Um, Hope's Garden, and I guess Mashar talked about it earlier. So Mashar, I'm gonna go back up and see if I see your original comment. Well, let's look at this and then we'll, I'll see if I see the original. Uh, Hope's Garden says, Mashar, I agree. The thought of Harry and Meghan burying their child alone under that tree still breaks my heart. Prayers for both of them. And they're talking about um, when Harry and Meghan um, had the miscarriage and how they buried, um, as Harry called it, their little package under a tree. Yeah, it is definitely very heartbreaking. And so many women every day um, experience this. And so I'm really happy that, you know, not happy, you know, but I've, it, it feels good that they're able to talk about it and it, it, it gives women who either are afraid or for whatever reason don't talk about it and they carry that with them. They carry it as a burden, you know, some other guilt or fear or whatever it is that you feel or they feel. And I'm, um, you know, so it's good that Harry and Meghan were able to talk about it. Meghan wrote about it. Harry wrote about it. They talk, you know, um, and so that they were able to talk and, and get that out. So, and it gives people permission to be able to speak and, 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 you know, to be able to hopefully get healed from that. So, yeah, it is, it is very heartbreaking. Um, you know, I don't know if you recover from that. I know you learn in time to be able to live with it. So definitely, definitely need prayers about that. So, yeah. And I think the sad part about this is all that um, pain that they have gone through and to see people not care and to, you know, and still feel like it's okay to still hate them. And, you know, again, two people who have done nothing to them, that they still feel that it's okay to destroy their lives. 
and not one care in the world about the trauma that those two people are experiencing. I mean, you know, we just read Harry's book, 400 and something pages of pouring his heart out and people still feel like it's okay to attack. It's still okay to destroy them. And I, <sighs> unbelievable. Um, let's see. Uh, Louise, hi Louise. Louise says, I watched that woman of Housewife of New York. Oh, okay. I guess that's the reality show, Housewife of New York. She isn't a nice person and she has a lot of issues. She and her mother, ne oh, she and her mother never had time for her. Uh, again, people with issues. And so putting their issues and throwing their issues and projecting their issues in someone else and all their hurts and anger onto someone else. And again, you know, she has, you know, on top of all the other issues, she has mommy issues. It's just <laughs> it, amazing, unbelievable. And which is why I'm so happy that Megan and Harry don't are not on social media. They are just completely stayed away. They can stay in their bubble so that they don't have to take on any of people's nonsense. And a lot of times I have learned to not take on people's mess because this is for these reasons. It's, I realize that it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing, if it wasn't me, it would be somebody else they'll be projecting their mess onto. I don't take on people's mess. <laughs> I'm like, your mess is yours and I'm not taking it from you. You deal with your mess. And so, um, you know, I just, I'm happy that they have just like, nope, we are not engaging in this stuff. You keep your mess. You can say whatever you want. We're not going to participate in it. And so, yeah, it's like, I mean, this woman has a lot of issues going on. And instead of dealing with it and facing it, she projects it and spews it out at other people. So unbelievable. Um, let's see. A couple more before we end. Um... Lorna says, um, that makes sense. The queen knew she was dying, so she gave the money to Fergie to buy the condo so her corgis could live in style and also place for Pedro to rest if she if he loses the lodge. That actually makes a lot of sense to me. Then this, actually, this explanation, yeah, too, makes a lot of sense. Um, because, again, that's the queen's favorite son, and I'm sure part of her does not trust Charles. And I, you know, Queen Betty, for all she is, she was a smart woman. You know, I'm sure she had to make sure she takes care. She took care of her favorite son. And she always liked Fergie. The, the reason Fergie wasn't around them was a lot because Prince Philip couldn't stand her. And especially when she had that toe sucking issue. And it's kind of like, you know, Prince Philip, who are you to be judging people? I mean, you know, look at him, what he was doing and look at what Charles was doing and look at what the, the rest of his family for him to be judging Fergie. I mean, that's ridiculous. But he did. He couldn't stand her. And so but the queen always liked her. And, you know, and so I could totally see Queen Betty doing this to make sure that her corgis are okay and hey, her favorite grand, uh, favorite son and, and her, I could totally see her doing this. So, you know, again, whatever you think of Andrew, if you, I say, always say this, if you are okay with Charles being king, then you have no problems with Andrew because they're one in the same, you know? And so whatever, you know, if he ends up staying at the lodge or not, you know, I mean, what are, what are they going to do with the lodge? You know, if he leaves there, what are they going to do with it? I guess give give William another home. I mean, it's not like Charles want to move there. You know, Charles has his how many home, other homes. So it's just, it's just all nonsense, really. But, you know, again, I could, I could totally see Queen Betty doing this. That makes total sense to me. Absolute sense. Um, let's see. I keep saying a couple more before we end. Um, Maggie's Howell says, hi, Maggie. Maggie says, Harry is raking in the big bucks. Good for him. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look, you collect that money, Harry and Meghan. Collect it. Collect that money because you know the other royals, that's what they're doing. 
That is what they are doing. I mean, you know, look at how much William inherited and look at how much Charles inherited. Why shouldn't Harry? Harry's literally working for his money. He is literally working for it. So there you go. Apart from what he inherited from his mom, everything that he's done so far, is he's earned it. So can't say that for the others, that's for sure. So Lydia says, awesome moderator, says if Megan chooses to write a book, it will also be a huge seller. Yeah, I'm, you know, I don't know if she will or not, but I would assume at some point she will. I mean, from that interview, from what was it, the cut? interview whichever interview she did um when she um said you know i have i think she said something in the in the vein of i have much to say and i will uh, until i'm un i i have a lot to say until i don't or something like that she said and so whether that me that meant a lot to say in the harry and megan docuseries or if there's more stuff that she wants to talk about which i'm sure there is because you know I'm sure what what was told there was not all of it. So I'm sure it would be a huge seller as well. So yeah. Um, and I look forward to her, what, whatever one name that she would name that book, something that would really um, throw in the faces of the royal reporters, protocol or some <laughs> nonsense like that, you know? It's like everything about Megan was like protocol. She's breaking protocol. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Lorna says, uh, no, uh, BF Law, oh, uh, lost, but she credits Martha who get, who give her the tools to succeed. Oh, okay. So she didn't get to be the intern for Martha, but she credits Martha with, um, okay. Martha is very funny with, uh, Snoop. <laughs> Martha and Snoop with their, uh, with their weed. On, I mean, I don't know if she does that, but definitely Snoop does. Um, but they had like the, a show together that was very, very funny, a cooking show. <laughs> it's very, very funny, Martha and Snoop. Uh, yes, let's see. Um, let's do one more before we end. Um, Oh, and we end it like this. Paddle, no weapons form against Harry and Meghan shall prosper. Amen, amen, and amen. No weapons form against any of us will prosper. So there we go. So that's where we ended today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you to our awesome moderators, Lydia Churchnelli, Karen M, Cookies and Cream. Thank you all so much uh, for all that you do in the chat, making sure our, our space is safe and wonderful and fun. I, at least I hope you have fun. <laughs> at least I am having fun, so I hope you do as well. So thank you so much to our awesome moderators and to our wonderful Two Cents Group members who support the channel on a monthly basis. Thank you. Thank you all so much for the kindness of your heart that you donate and um, support the channel like this. Thank you to all of our Ghost supporters who support in the chat, as you can see, whether it's donation or super thanks, super chat, super stickers, all of it. Thank you all so very, very much for all of the support you give. And again, if you are new here, please definitely go ahead and subscribe so that you know when we drop a video. Oh, click the notification bell and that will let you know when we drop a video. Um, and share and please like. Uh, 480 people in the chat. Please give us a like and um, you know share it with your friends. Help us to continue building the channel. Thank you all so much for helping us to do that so far. And if you're able, join the Two Cents Crew. So and again, Two Cents Crew will be on the in the first. Everybody can listen in to the book club tomorrow. Every um, for the whole thing from one o'clock. But the first hour would be the Two Cents Crew calling in and being in the chat. And then after that hour, I open it up to our wider community. Everybody co could come in the chat and give, it a, give us a call and chat in the live chat. So that's how it works. So thank you all so much. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for Hire is Waiting tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>